Hello, Fun Nation. My name is James, checking in with team number 6081, the Digital Dislocators from Manchester, Michigan, here at the first in Michigan State Championship event. The Digital Dislocators won two events last year, and they won another one in finalists this year. This smooth machine, accurate shooter, arguably the fastest robot in FIM. So much more to discover. Here we have Joseph, Bodie, and Curtis here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, Joseph, start us off. Give us the, the wheels up, the climber. What's up with your robot? Yeah, so to start off our robot, we run our drive base on a set of MK4i modules uh, with an advanced pinion kit. This is L3 ratio. And something different that separates us from teams is we use our own custom 3D printed TPU wheels. And doing so, we allow it to get much more friction and uh, coefficient of friction on the carpet. So that allows us to accelerate a lot faster and have more consistent programming and autonomous. Um, alongside that, it really allows for autonomous consistency, especially later on in the autos that Bodhi will talk about. Um, moving along the path, we move to our climber systems. Our climbers are driven 20 to 1 by NEOs. Uh, they are just standard climber in the box, two stages with these are our own custom plasma ho cut hooks. Uh, all of this has been designed in CAD uh, to be efficiently nestled together. Something we really stress with our robot is simplicity and efficiency. And a lot of that is shown through our climbers and drive base. Doing so, we really have a sleek design that's able to zip around the field and not avoid any of the big game obstacles out there. So very compact. I love to see it from digital. So back to the wheels a little bit. How long will you say those wheels last? Do you have to change them out often or are they pretty durable? Yeah, so it depends really on the roughness of the match. If there's a lot of contact bumping. These wheels typically last about 10 to 12 matches with uh, medium contact. Playing heavy defense, they might last 10. Playing pretty longevity wise, uh, maybe 14. So we get a lot of a uh, lot of use out of them, and they're very cheap. They're very affordable for lower uh, income teams to be able to afford and do a more efficient system of driving at a cheaper cost. Really cool innovation from you guys. Well done, Curtis. Do you want to take us a little bit more along the note path of the robot? What is your intake shooter pivot? Tell me more about that. So our intake is our shooter. Uh, we really wanted a simple design this year. So we have uh, one big uh, bracket here uh, with two. Uh, Vortexes, uh, they're 40, 45 to one, and they uh, go through a solid steel uh, hex shaft into our, uh, basically it's an aluminum box that houses all of our intake and, and such. Um, on the bottom here, we have our indexer. We call it the flippy doodah. It's two smart robot servos tied together with some uh, starfish wheels and that really locks the note in the back of our intake when we transition from intaking to shooting. Uh, moving up here, we have our uh, shooter shooter intake rollers. Uh, when it comes down, they are intake, but when it flips back up, there are shooter rollers. Uh, they've been working really well. Uh, I think they're a six to five ratio. Um, they're really good. Moving up to our uh, amp bar, this is something we added about a day before our week five competition, uh, we originally had something like the Flippy Duda smart robot servo, but it kept breaking. So what we had to do is we went in and in 24 hours, we designed, built, and programmed this amp bar. It's made out of TPU, polycarbonate, and 3D printed parts. It is ran by a Neo 550, uh, 25 to one, and onto a 90 degree gearbox. Uh, we really wanted to stress simplicity this year, so uh, we tried to design something that would require as little programming as possible. Speaking of programming, I'm going to hand it over to Bodhi. So Bodhi, you have some really successful autonomous routines, a lot of successful features in Teleop as well. Tell us a lot about the autonomous features of your robot. For sure. So starting off with autonomous, I'd like to highlight our vision systems to start off with. So 
We use two uh, Limelight 3s, one pointing forward and one pointing backward. This gives us a lot of range on the April tag. So we've got these at just the perfect angle. So we can see, we have an April tag in view throughout uh, the entirety of our autonomous paths. Um, these are directly updating our pose along with the, the standard wheel odometry. Uh, we use a standard deviation algorithm to, to meld those two poses together into the most accurate pose estimation possible. And that's what really allows us to have those great autos that not only hit every time, but also still shoot the notes into the speaker even after um, collisions and contact with other robots. When we're going to the midline, we wanted to be able to hit another robot um, as hard as we possibly can and still be able to cor correct and finish our Auton and most importantly, finish Telia. So um, we've actually had autonomous routines where we've came back, hit the stage um, because we've hit a robot out at the midline, hit the stage legs um, and flip 180 degrees. And we've been able to correct for that because of the limelights and still finish our Autons and shoot two more pieces. Um, as far as consistency goes, we have a four piece auto that grabs um, the three Alliance notes. That has a 100% success rate in uh, the past 12 matches we've played. So in 12 matches, we've hit four for four every single time and gone out to the midline and grabbed that fifth piece. Uh, we're ho hoping to be able to shoot that fifth piece and maybe even a sixth one for Worlds, um, but we will, we'll see what we can do um, as far as that goes. Um, moving out of auto into teleop, we like to make our teleop as easy as possible for our driver and me as the operator. So a lot of our stuff is just one button cl click, sequential command groups, um, stuff like that, that makes it super, super easy for um, our both of our drivers um, to do all of the, the routines that we need in Teleop. Um, I can show off a few of those real quick. Um, we have our auto ground intake command, just if you wanna hold the robot real quick. So this is gonna put the pivot down, um, start the feeder as well as start the intake rollers all at once. So we'll a, a nice and quick routine there. We also have our amp command. One button automatically does all of that. Same as our podium. So that is our, our range shooting button, which I would really like to stress and highlight because that's what allows us to perform under defense. Under defense is super important this year because if you can only take subwoofer shots, you can get shut down at the subwoofer. Super easy by defense. And so we decided we needed that podium shot. So we implemented a interpolator that um, uses our distance from speaker. So we calculate our distance um, from speaker using some uh, fun trigonometry and our pose uh, from the limelights. And using that, uh, we interpolate between points, um, just like a lot of teams have done for our both our pivot angle and our shooter power to get those uh, super precise speaker shots that we need as far as range shooting goes. And we've also implemented a shooting while moving um, feature, which is, is very nice, um, not even for shooting while moving, but even uh, when we're going to line up, you know, if, if the driver accidentally bumps a little bit, or if, you know, we get hit, it will actually um, correct. So it knows like, okay, if we're moving this fast, we have to aim here and it will still hit. So that's again, super important under defense. So uh, we've we've ha had pr pretty good success with our rain shots, although we don't use it very often because, you know, the subwoofer is really fast. Um, and other than that, I think we're good to wrap things up. Cody, thank you so much for telling us all about that programming. These students really clearly know what they're talking about. This robot's very impressive. Cannot wait to see how it does the rest of the day and Saturday here at the Michigan State Championship and into the World Championship. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. My name is James with First Updates Now, signing off for Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.